What's up everyone, welcome back. In this video, we gotta graph the function y equals six minus five over three to the power of two x plus six. Now, this is sort of a weird looking function here. So we have an exponent, but it's in the denominator, which is something we haven't dealt with before. But in fact, this function, I'm gonna rewrite it over here. We can rewrite this we can manipulate it algebraically in a certain way where it looks like an exponential function, where then we follow the same process that we did before with transformations of points. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the six in front and then this negative five, I'm gonna sort of separate from this fraction. So I'm gonna put the negative five here and this is gonna be one over three to the power of two x plus six and then this plus six would be there. Right, so this negative five, I sort of separated from the function, from the, um, not the function, the fraction rather. And then negative five times this fraction basically would be like negative five over one times the fraction. So negative five times one, we would get negative five in the numerator there. So now it's starting to look closer and closer to an exponential function, but it's still sort of in a weird format. We still have this exponent just in the denominator. Now, one to the power of anything is always gonna give us one. So we can actually put the same exponent to this one here. So one to the power of two x plus six over three to the power of two x plus six. Because basically one to the power of anything is always just going to equal one. So let's put that same exponent up there. Then we have the plus six. And then notice we could take the exponent outside of the bracket. So we can take this and rewrite it like that. Okay, does that make sense? So a little bit confusing, especially this part, just adding this random exponent. The reason why I added it there is because I want to show you that we know the rule a over b to the power of x. We distribute that exponent to the numerator and the denominator. Well, I'm just going backwards. So I'm taking the exponent from the numerator and the denominator, which is 2x plus 6, and then I'm taking it outside of the bracket. And we didn't have to necessarily put this here, but I just wanted to show it to you visually that I'm going from this step to this step. Basically, you could have put any exponent here for one, right? One to the power of five, one to the power of negative 10, it's always gonna equal one. So one to the power of two x plus six is gonna equal one as well. They are the same thing. And then I'm just taking out that same exponent that's in the numerator and the denominator. And now notice that we have a nicer looking exponential function. We can actually tell what the base function is. So the base function is uh, one over three to the power of x, and then we're just gonna be transforming it. So one over three to the power of x, what's the parent table for that? So if we use negative one, zero, one, one over three to the power of negative one is uh, positive three, one over three to the power of zero is one, and then one over three to the power of one is uh, one over three, or let's put a decimal, 0.33. Right, so that's the base function that we're going to be transforming. And then um, writing this function over here, we got negative five, one over three, two x plus six, and then this is plus six as well. So notice in this case, we can get the a value, the k value, the d value, and the c value. Before we do that though, you wanna make sure that that k value in the exponent is by itself, so we gotta factor that out. So at two x plus six, I'm gonna to change to two bracket x plus three. So a value, negative five, k value is two. The d value is the opposite sign here, so that's negative three, and then the c value is six. So what's the formula? x over k, so all the x values are gonna divide by two, and then we're gonna subtract three, right? Add the d value, but it's negative in this case. All the y values are gonna multiply by negative five, 
and add six. So starting with the x values, taking negative one, dividing it by two, that's negative 0 0.5 minus three. That gives us negative 3.5. And zero divided by two minus three, that gives us negative three. And one divided by two is 0 0.5 minus three gives us negative 2.5. And then uh, negative 5 times 3 is negative 15, plus 6, that gives us negative 9. 1 times negative 5 is uh, negative 5 plus 6, that gives us positive 1. And then negative 5 times 0.33 plus 6 gives us positive 4.35. So now we just have to take these values here and graph them. So I'm going to take this table and I'm going to plot it over here. Remember this table is for this function. This is the transform table. So what do we always start with plotting for an exponential function? We start with the C value, the horizontal asymptote, which in this case is positive six. So that's the first thing I'm going to plot. So plot a line here. Y is equal to six. And then let's plot these points. So negative 3.5, negative 9. So negative 3.5, negative 9, let's say that's like down here. And then we have negative 3 and 1, which would be like up here. And then negative 2.5, 4.35, let's say that's like uh, over here. So basically this function is looking something like this. Right, so this is this function. And if they ask for the domain and range, domain for an exponential function is always xer, range uh, is yer, but y has to be less than six, less than that horizontal asymptote, because all the points are below it, right? So sometimes you're gonna have to take a function, rearrange it to get it into a format you're comfortable with, transform the points, follow the same process, and you get your graph.